What's going on everyone, my name is Kodomor and welcome back to episode 16 of the New Beginner Java Game Programming Tutorial Series. In this tutorial, we are going to move on to level generation. So we are going to begin that by creating our tiles. Now we are making a tile-based game, so that means little elements of our world are going to be made up by little tiles, like a grass tile, a dirt tile, a stone tile, and a bunch of other tiles. So that's what we're going to start with today. First things first, you're going to want to make sure in your assets class that you have a few images to use, so I've cropped out a grass, dirt, stone, and tree tile image from my sprite sheet and set those in my assets class that way we can use them as tile images. So let's get on to creating our tile class. Go ahead and right click on your main package, go up to new class and we are going to name this class tile. This is going to be kind of like if we look at our entity system, our entity was the base class for every single entity in our game like a creature or an item. Well, we are going to make a tile class and it's going to be the main class that contains everything every tile must have. And I'm going to put that in the dot tiles package of our game. Go ahead and create your tile class and we can get started to coding it. First things first, we are going to want a constructor, so a public tile constructor, and we are going to take in a few things for every tile. Every single tile is going to need an image, what it looks like so that we can actually display the tile to the screen. So as one of the parameters in our tile here, we're going to create a buffered image and I'm just going to name it texture, the texture of our tile or how it looks. So go ahead and import buffered image and then above here we have to obviously create a, a protected buffered image object called texture. And I'm making it protective because we are going to have classes that extend this tile class. So we are just going to set this dot texture equal to texture inside of the constructor here. That way we have an image of the tile. But we're also going to take in one more thing. We are going to take an integer called ID. And above here we're going to do the same thing. We're going to create a protected final integer ID. And then down here we are going to set this dot ID equal to ID. And I'm making it final because a tile's ID, which is essentially a way for us to identify the tile, every single tile is going to have a different integer number attached to it so that we can tell what it is. Every ID should be unique to a tile. So that means we should never have to change an ID once we assign a tile a specific ID like 0, 1, 2, or 3. So that's why I'm making it final because we should never ever have to change it. Now down here we are going to create uh, a public uh, method which is going to return an int and it's just going to be called get ID. That's just going to re return the ID for us. And that's just a, sim a simple getter. And then we are also going to need a tick method and a render method just like anything else in our game, a tile has to be able to update its variables if it has any, most tiles won't. It's also going to need to be able to render itself or draw itself to the screen using the texture buffer image that we give it. So go ahead, we are going to create a, first of all, a public void tick method. And we are going to leave that empty for now because we don't really have anything to put in a tick method for a tile at this point in time. And of course we're also going to have a public void render method and it's going to take in a graphics object which we will call g of course. But it's also going to take in two more things. It's going to take in an integer x and an integer y or a position on the screen. Now, a lot of you are probably saying, well, wait a second, shouldn't a tile just take in an x and y position in the constructor or something and not take it in in the render method? Well, you're going to see why we're doing this in just a moment, because it's actually very important in making our game efficient the way that we are making our world or tiles. So just follow along with me here. I'm going to import graphics like that, and all we have to do here is do g.drawImage. We are going to draw the texture image that we passed into the constructor originally. We're going to draw it at the x and y coordinate it gave us, then we're going to have to specify some width and some height, and I actually forgot to create those variables. So at the top of the tile class here, we are going to create a few public static final integer variables called tile width, and this can be anything you want. Now I want my tiles to be 64 pixels, and then tile height to be 64 pixels, so I want every one of my tiles to be 64 pixels by 64 pixels. But of course you can make these values whatever you want. If you want 32 pixel by 32 pixel tiles, set these values to 32. And you'll notice that these values are very similar to those in our creature class. We have default health, default speed, that's kind of what we're doing. We're creating some static final variables that just hold how big a tile should be. Now back in our render method here, we are just going to draw at x, y, and then with a width of tile width and a uh, height of tile height, and then null as our last parameter as always. So this should successfully render a tile to the screen. 
Now before I talk about exactly how this tile class is going to work, and don't worry, I am going to explain it, we first have to create a few tiles. So right click on your tiles package that we just created, go up to new class, and I am going to name this class grass tile, like so. And our grass tile class is going to extend the tile class. And we are going to, of course, have to add a constructor because the constructor of the tile class takes in a texture or a buffered image rather, and an ID. Now our grass tile constructor is only going to take in an ID because we already know that a grass tile is going to have a simple grass image. So the parameter that we pass into the super method, which calls the tile class's constructor as the texture or the buffered image, is just going to be our assets class dot and then your grass tile image. And we're still just going to take in an ID as a parameter of our grass tile, and we're going to pass along the ID to that class. And again, you're going to see how all of this comes together in just a bit. So that's all we need for that grass tile right now. And actually, we don't have to import buffered image anymore. Now, if we think about it, we need to know if a tile is walkable or not. So we need to know if you should be able to walk on a tile, which obviously a grass tile you should be able to walk on, or if you shouldn't be able to walk on a tile. So like a rock, you don't want to be walking into a rock, that's not right. So back here in our tile class, we are going to create a method, and it's going to be a public boolean, it's going to return a boolean, it's going to be called isSolid. And this is just going to defaultly return false. So if you call the isSolid method on a tile, and it returns false, it means the tile is not a solid block and you are allowed to walk through it. If the isSolid method returns true, it means it is a solid tile and you shouldn't be able to walk through it. Now I'm just going to defaultly return false. So that means if we call the isSolid method on our grass tile, since we don't have that method anywhere in here, it's going to go to the tile class and call this one and return false. Now in case you don't understand that, let's make a new tile here. Right click on your, main, or on your tiles package, go up to new class. I'm going to call this a rock tile. And this is going to be a solid tile. I don't want the user or the player to walk on a rock tile. So rock tile extends tile. And we are of course going to have to create a constructor like the last one. We are not going to take in a buffered image again because we know that a rock tile is going to have um, a, uh, a texture of just our stone image or our rock image. But we are still going to take in the ID, just like the grass tile, except a rock tile is solid. We don't want the player walking on it. So all we have to do is we have to override the isSolid method. So what that means is going to your tile class, we have this isSolid method right here. Simply copy that method into the rock tile and return true instead. If you're using Eclipse, you can see this little green arrow right here. That means you're overriding a method, and good programming practice, you can put the at override notation. That way you know that this method is being overridden from the tile class. So if you call the isSolid method on the rock tile, it will return true. If you call the isSolid method on a grass tile, it doesn't have it in here, so it's going to return false, because that's what the tile class has. I know I'm going all over the place with this, but trust me, once we begin working with tiles a lot, you're going to get how it all works together. So I'm going to go and make one more tile. If you want to try, go ahead and make a tile by yourself. Make sure that you can understand it. I'm going to make a dart tile. And you can make as many tiles as you want, of course. Just make sure that they extend the tile class. Add the constructor in. And of course, a dirt tile I want to be able to walk in. So that means we shouldn't have to override the isSolid method. And we are just going to add assets.dirt should be my image, and we don't have to take that in as the constructor. So it's as simple as that to create tiles, and I'm going to walk through all of this at the end of the video, do not worry. Now let's talk about exactly how we're going to use these tiles, because right now it makes no sense how we are going to use all of these tiles. The concept that I'm going to use to render tiles to the screen and create our levels may be a bit tough to understand at first, but I'm going to try and explain it as best as I can. So I'm going to make a comment above here, and I'm going to make this the class, and I'm just going to say uh, static stuff here. We are going to make a bunch of static variables at the top of our tile class so we can access them from anywhere. First of all, we are going to make an array of tiles, so it's going to be a public, and make sure these are static so that we can access them from anywhere. They're going to be a public static tile array, it's just going to hold a bunch of tile objects called tiles, and set that equal to a new tile array, and give it a size of, say, 256. That should be plenty. 
Of course, if you have more and more tiles, just increase the size of this array, but 256 should be plenty. Now, this tiles array is going to hold one instance of every single tile in our game. So what I'm going to do is below here, I'm going to create a public static tile, and I'm going to call it, whoops, I'm going to call it grass tile. And that is going to be set equal to a new grass tile. And it's important that you set it as a tile object, but set it equal to a new grass tile, of course. That way we know that a grass tile is a tile, but it has a specific class of its own. And our grass tile, of course, takes in an ID. So we are going to give this an ID of 0. So the ID number 0 is going to refer to a grass tile all the time. Now currently this does nothing. The grass tile is going to pass along the ID to the constructor here. It's going to set the texture and the ID, except we've done nothing with this tiles array. We haven't added this grass tile instance into this array. So inside of this tile constructor, whenever we create a new tile, or rather whenever the tile constructor right here is run, what we are going to do is we are going to set the tiles array at and then the ID that we gave it, so we are using the ID as an index for the array, equal to this class right here. And I'm going to walk you guys through this and how it all works. But let's just try and create a few more tiles. So we have a grass tile here. Let's create my other two tiles. It's going to be public static tile, and I'm going to name this one dirt tile. And my dirt tile equals a new dirt tile, and I'm going to give it an ID of 1. Make sure that you give every single tile a different ID. And finally, public static tile, what did I call it? A rock tile. Rock tile equals a new rock tile. And I'm going to give that an ID of 2. So what we are doing here is we're just creating a bunch of static instances of every single tile we have. And since every one of these tiles extends the tile class, and calls the super or the tile class's constructor using an ID, what the constructor here is going to do is it's going to take this tile array and it's going to say, all right, the element at whatever this tile's ID is, so if we're working with the grass tile, the tiles array, tiles array sub zero, so index zero, is just going to be equal to this tile right here, the tile that we're creating, the grass tile. In the case of a dirt tile, it's going to set the tiles array at index of 1 equal to the dirt tile instance right here that we created. So that's what we're doing there. And once we actually use the tiles array when we're generating our worlds and our maps and everything, it's going to make a lot more sense. Because right now it doesn't look like there's much use for any tiles right now. Now surprisingly that's it for today's tutorial. We've essentially covered the basics of the tile class. Now let's make sure this works, and then let me go through all of the code really quickly to make sure that we get the order in which everything's working in. So let's try something. In our game state right here, what I'm going to do is in the render method here, I'm going to do the tile class dot tiles, so the tiles array, and we're able to access that directly because the tiles array is a static and it's public. So the tiles array at, say, an ID of 0, and an ID of 0, if we look here, should be our grass tile and we do dot render, and we render that grass tile, and we pass in g as a parameter, and then an x into y position. I'll just render it as 0 comma 0. This should render a grass tile to the screen at x0 and y0. If you go ahead and run your game, we get a grass tile rendered at the screen, and it's the size that you gave it, tile width and tile height, which is 64 by 64 for me. Now take a look at your tiles class. Say I want to render a rock tile to the screen. Well, I know that a rock tile has an ID number of 2, so the tiles array at an index of 2, whatever ID that you want, should render the rock tile to the screen. That's my rock tile. It looks really terrible, but nonetheless, it's a rock tile. So, that is how you can access any tile using a single instance of that tile. We're just creating one instance of the grass tile, one instance of the dirt tile, and we're just storing them in, a in an array and we're able to reuse them over and over again. So even if this doesn't make too too much sense, which I had so much trouble grasping this concept when I first learned it, but even if you don't fully understand it, once we actually get to building maps, you will in no time. So. What we've done here is we've created a tile class that other tiles can extend. So grass tile extends tile, and all we do is we take an ID, and then we call the tile constructor using that ID and some image from our assets class. And we do the same for every other tile. This is going to call the tile class's constructor here, set a texture and an ID. Then our render method takes in an int x and a y 
coordinates, so where to render the tile to the screen, and we just render it using our draw image method. And we draw it at a certain width and height, which we've specified by two variables up here. Then we have an is solid method. Now, any tile that extends this class, its is solid method is going to return false, meaning it is not a solid block and you are able to walk on it. But in cases of our rock tile, which are solid, we simply override this method, which means put it in the rock tile class, and we return true, meaning it is a solid tile and we shouldn't be able to walk through it. That's really just a helpful method to have, and we are going to be using it when we enter collision detection in the future tutorials. Now, instead of creating a bunch of new instances of a grass tile and a dirt tile and everything, we are only creating one instance of each tile that we have, and we're giving them separate IDs. Now, in the constructor here, we are setting this global static tiles array at the ID as an index equal to this, which is essentially the current tile that called this tile class's constructor. So if the grass tile called the tile class's constructor by the super method, it's going to set whatever the tiles array at the ID equal to that grass tile. So we essentially have the core basis of tiles down packed. So let's move on to the next tutorial where we are actually going to begin our level class. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.